Mike Rivero is a radio show host. He has been following the silver market for decades. This is what he says. Uh, when the United States was started, the Constitution said the money was silver and gold coin. The uh, paper notes were just claim checks. OK, well, I'm hardly the only person to have uh, explored the financial and economic dimensions uh, of war. Uh, there was a, a Marine Corps Major General Smedley Butler, and he wrote a treatise called War is a Racket, uh, where he basically said he served all of his life in the Marine Corps. And then when he retired and was able to speak freely, he said, we were acting as a military arm for private corporations uh, to go on in and take over resources and take control of areas that were of vital economic interest uh, to American companies. And... Uh, you know, war is always about profit. We'll be told we're bringing democracy to this or that country, which we've never actually done. You know, we bring things like the Shah of Iran and the dictator Pinochet and uh, and uh, various other dictators around the world. Uh, that's what they tell the people to get them to go along with this thing. But most wars, virtually all wars, involve acquisition of raw materials, acquisition of territory, acquisition of control over important lanes of uh, communication. And uh, so as a result, there's always a financial aspect. I mean, we're looking now at $40 billion of our tax money <clears throat> has been allocated for the war in Ukraine. As it turns out, Ukraine's only going to get about 15 percent of that. Uh, the rest is already being carved up and divvied off uh, for other parts of the military. Uh, so that they can go on out and continue to expand. Uh, we are a military economy. We have been since the end of World War II. It's uh, we we don't see it because we grew up with it. Uh, you know this this idea that most of our money goes for weapons and uh, uh, power projection uh, compared to other countries. Uh, but uh, you know you have banks that will finance wars. Uh, you have banks that will start wars to. Uh, to uh, uh, conquer countries that refuse to go along with their banking system. A good example of that would be uh, the First Bank of the United States. Uh, when the United States was started, the Constitution said the money was silver and gold coin. The uh, paper notes were just claim checks and had no value of themselves. Uh, then you had uh, the uh, First Bank of the United States, which operated like the Federal Reserve. They were printing up these paper notes and saying, the notes have the, the value, the notes are money, and uh, drove the United States very much into the same kind of poverty that was hitting all over Europe. So Congress uh, in uh, 1811, uh, withdrew the charter for the First Bank of the United States and the Rothschilds basically said, if you don't extend the charter, we will bring a war down on you, which they did. They went to uh, the crown in Great Britain and said, we will finance a war to reconquer the American colonies at virtually zero interest. And that was the beginning of the War of 1812. And then there was the uh, Second Bank of the United States. Uh, the uh, U.S. had to accept it uh, because of the severe debt that uh, the War of 1812 had plunged them into. Then you had Andrew Jackson that came along and uh, succeeded in shutting that bank down. Uh, there was almost immediately an assassination attempt uh, against him. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Uh, and uh, there it all kind of uh, sat until 1913 when uh, the bankers created uh, what was originally going to be called the Third Bank of the United States, but out of concern for people's remembering of the uh, privations of the First and Second Bank of the United States, they gave it a different name. They called it the Federal Reserve. And uh, it's uh, unconstitutional. Uh, the Constitution does not allow Congress to delegate the authority for money creation and control to a privately owned bank, which is what the Federal Reserve is. Uh, they have ties to the federal government, but they are not a federal government agency. It's a privately owned central bank, and they're in the business of making money, not serving the American people. Well, communities have in the past literally created their own local currencies. Uh, this was very popular during uh, the Civil War. Uh, where many cities in the Confederacy uh, issued their own currency that was only good within that county. 
uh, during the Great Depression. Uh, a lot of communities uh, across America did exactly the same thing uh, because the, the U.S. currency was considered so untrustworthy. So, uh, you know, if your community is against the idea of being a slave to a plastic card, uh, you can set up, you know, a, a system of uh, a medium of exchange, uh, preferably one with a commodity base. Uh, there was a very interesting story. And again, this comes out of the uh, Great Depression. There was this town uh, that had a newspaper and uh, the owner of the newspaper was a little strapped for cash, uh, but he needed to get paper and ink and other things could, to get his newspaper out. So he made up a bench of certificates that could be exchanged for advertising in his newspaper. And he started bartering those for the ink and paper uh, for the newspaper. And they became so popular, they literally displaced the U.S. currency in that town. Because people said, we know where this guy lives, and we know he's, he's going to redeem these certificates. We don't always have that deal. Uh, back during the Depression, uh, the paper notes, the silver certificate still said on the front, you could walk into a bank and exchange it for $1 in lawful money, that being the silver. And, uh, of course, the Federal Reserve notes no longer mention that at all. But during the Depression, there were a lot of people who took those paper notes uh, into the bank. And the bank said, we don't have the silver. Sorry. And there were runs on the bank. And uh, it hardly confined to the Great Depression. Uh, that's exactly the same thing that led to the Nixon shock uh, when he closed the gold window. Uh, because uh, during the uh, Bretton Woods Agreement, uh, everyone said, OK, we're going to let the dollar take over from the pound sterling as the global currency, uh, as long as you put reasonable limits on how many of these dollars uh, are printed. And the dollars can always be exchanged for, I think it was $36 per ounce uh, of gold. And uh, so uh, France uh, took a look at their little warehouse full of banknotes at one point, decided to cash them in, uh, in part because they were very unhappy with U.S. policies at the time. Nixon took a look at the Treasury, realized there was nowhere near enough gold to redeem all these notes, and just ended gold convertibility. And uh, it was called Nixon shock. It hammered the dollar. And uh, so they started linking the dollar to uh, other people's oil, the petrodollar, and uh, bolstering the uh, international demand for dollars that way, uh, which is why uh, uh, Putin's uh, requirement that people buying Russian oil and gas now pay for it in the ruble, that's a direct shot across the bow of, of the U.S. Uh, economic domination of the world. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. 
see what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Markus Dahn.